welcome to another episode of The Global Game Pod, where we focus on one thing and one thing only, and that's football. What a goal from Ronaldo! It is absolutely magnificent! It is David Becker! With Coach Rudy and friends, this is Global Game Pod. Yo, 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 what's happening, people? Welcome to another episode of the Global Game Pod, brought to you by CKB Interiors. You guys already know what to do, so if you need a kitchen bedroom, go ahead and do it. I am joined today by a very special guest to myself, because this is not somebody that I've actually even had a conversation with prior to just a few Twitter exchanges, and now I've got him in front of me. So this is special for me in a sense, because I'm a coach, and as a coach, I look up to senior level coaches. And Omar is definitely one of them. Um, Omar is currently with uh, Watford under 23s and also with the national team, so England's under 16. So you've got to understand this is a huge deal for me. So first and foremost, viewers, don't be disheartened if I ask a lot of questions that are going to benefit me because, well, it's my podcast and I want to learn. So uh, I'll be doing that. But I will try and dive into his story and his history and his background and uh, we'll go from there. So welcome, Omar. Yeah, thank you. Great to be here. First of all, I hope you're in a, a good, healthy, safe environment and, and all the viewers as well are in a, a healthy, safe environment and, and all doing well. Thank you very much. Now I am and I hope you are too. Uh, I know you've got young kids and, 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 a, and a family, so I hope everyone is safe and well. All good, all good. Thank you. All right, brilliant. So, Omar, I want you to give it, I know I've given a short introduction on you, a short brief on what you do currently. Um, but if you would like to sum yourself up in a couple of sentences, that'd be brilliant for us. Um, sum myself up. Hard working. Uh, work with integrity. I'm, I like to think I'm honest. Um, always looking to try and learn and, and be better at what I do. Uh, as a player, as a coach. And yeah, just give people the opportunity and the chance to, to learn and develop in, in an environment that, that they're comfortable with. Ah, brilliant. That's brilliant. I mean, that... You're, you sound like a sound guy. I've been obviously following your career from, a, from afar. Because um, like I said, obviously when this stuff came out about uh, BAME coaches and stuff joining the national team, I saw your name pop straight away and I was like, I need to know about this guy and what he's done. And when I look back, when I look back at it, when I look at your CV, I was like, whoa, I did not expect that. <laughs> um, so I want to go all the way back to young Omar, I'm talking four, five, six years old, when you first got into football, I want, and I want to start there. What was your journey into football? I, uh, I was a kid who had loads of energy, never stopped running around no matter what it was, whether it was in the park, whether it was at home, just never stopped. So I think my first uh, taste of football, my dad used to, to, to make me tired, he used to just take me over the park and just kick a ball around trees and stuff like that uh, and run. So that was my first introduction to, to football. Didn't really, I, I was a bit of a karate and martial artist at a young age, sort of like Pee Wee champion at the age of like eight, nine um, in England. I think I was, you know, a black belt at, uh, I can't remember, 10, possibly 11. Wow. Um, so football was a bit of a, a mixed bag. I was doing that and I was doing football, started football about eight, nine, um, grassroots school. I think my first game at grassroots, uh, I ran the opposite way and I tried to score my own goal. <laughs> um, so that's how, how sort of green I was. But yeah, I loved, I, I, listen, I, I, loved, I ended up loving the game. I ended up stopping karate and, and making choice and out of two. And, um, you know, football, football took me to, to where I am today. Um, had a lot of ups and downs along the way. Uh, a lot of release. I, got, I went into, so I was playing at grassroots, went to... Uh, Leighton Orient was my first club actually as a youngster. Oh. I think I was eight or nine. I went there for six, twelve weeks, and they were like, you know, he's done as well as others, but he's not better than what we've got. That was okay. like feedback from my father, and it was sort of like really upsetting. Really, you know, well, I know how kids feel. You know, really upsetting times. And then another one, funny enough, this is unbelievable. It was Watford. I went into Watford, and that was Gifton, Gifton's age group. Gifton, okay. yeah, yeah. Danny Brown, and people like that. Um, and I went in and I was training, I think I might have been training a year up for, for I think it was a three, four weeks. And it was like, um, nothing came of it. It was sort of no sort of like direction of whether I was going back, whether I wasn't. So my, my father ended up just saying, look, it doesn't like it's happening. Or maybe, maybe they did, did give him information and didn't tell me. Um, 
went back to grassroots again and worked hard in my, in my grassroots. And I went to Arsenal, I think, at the age of uh, 10. I think 10. And um, once I stepped in, I never stepped out. And, wow. That's, that's, that's actually quality, that. So you had to take a few rejections first. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I think those rejections, I, I say it all the time, I think rejections are either... Uh, help or hinder, you know, it depends what sort of character the, the player is. They have to take they have to take it in a, a positive or negative way. I think at the time I took it as a negative, but it, it spurred me on to want to work harder. Some people give up, I suppose, um, or maybe some people didn't have the people around them or don't have the people around them to help support them to carry on. Um, but with me, it spurred me, it pushed me, and it just made me want it even more. So I think it was a good part of, of my education. Yeah, no, definitely, because I do speak to a lot of people and I think the earlier you get that rejection and if, you, like you said, if you've got the right support network behind you, um, and in your case, it sounds like that's, that's your dad, that's your dad pushing you and making sure that you're, you're, you're getting the right things done. Like, and when that opportunity comes again and again and again and you get your chance at Arsenal, like you said, you didn't look back after that. You, you were in and that was it. That was that. Yeah, I, I was in, but you know, it, was, it wasn't an easy ride. I had to always work hard. I was never one of these players that went, like, I was never a player who had a silver spoon in his mouth and was spoiled. Um, I had to work hard through each phase of, of my time at Arsenal. You know, other than when I got to like, um, you know, 17, when I was really starting to establish myself, the period before then, I had to, I had to earn my two years at, at, at 12, 13, and my, of my two years at 15, 16. Yeah. And my, you know, so it, it was tough. Um, but again, it made me who I was. I've always had to fight. I've always had to fight for everything that I've ever earned. Um, so it's nothing new to me. I hope that changes one day. Um, but at the same time, like I say, it's made me who I am today. Mm. So, and it gives me a bit of edge, I think. Um, I, I do have a bit of edge. I can be a little bit of a hot head at times. Um, but I think I'm learning to develop skills and ways of, or train that in the right in the right way. And you went on to have what? Yeah, you had yeah a lot of appearances. I mean, I don't know the exact number, but it's two hundred fifty plus appearances in in at a very high level of football. Just give us a little bit of background on on, on those appearances, like where they came, which countries you've played in. Um, obviously, I, I I spent time at Arsenal and West Ham, where um, I got in around the squads. I was in a lot when I left Arsenal and went to West Ham. I was in a lot of the nearly all the squads every week at, at West Ham. Um, and then I ended up going on loan at Barnet in League Two, where I think I played 10, 11 games. Uh, Darren Curry, who's the manager there now, he, he was one of my teammates. Uh, I think I scored five goals in 10 games there, went back to West Ham. And then Cambridge United in League One wanted me. I went there and I think I scored 12 goals, uh, sorry, uh, four goals in, in 12 games um, in a loan period again. Then I went back. Um, Actually, I went to I went to I went to Holland before I went to West Ham. So I went to Holland and played in Den for Den Haag for three to four months. And I scored five goals in ten games. Uh, got sent off, so I missed four, five, four or five games, something like that, for lashing out, kicking someone, or whatever it was. <laughs> um, so that was a good spell. So I was always scoring goals and, and playing well, and uh, wherever I went. Um, and then when I when I left West Ham. I ended up going to Cambridge for a season in League Two, where I think I scored 18 goals in, in 50 games, something like that. Um, and then the opportunity to come up and go to Turkey came up to, into the Super League, and it was, a, it was a very good standard playing against very good, you know, world-class players, international players. Where I went to Denizli Sport, where I, I think I'd, you know, I'd scored. Uh, nine or ten goals in my first season in about 20 appearances, and then. I kicked on from there basically. Went moved to Trabzon, and then the national stuff came up, and uh, yeah, and then my career sort of carried on from there. And so yeah, I had, I think I had a, a fair, I think I had a fair, fair, fair career. I think I scored 80 goals, something like that. So I was not, I weren't a, a prolific goal scorer, but I was the creator. I yeah, created a lot of chances for my team, um, and I scored my fair share of goals. Uh, in today's game, I probably in the modern game, I probably would have been more of a 10. Uh, then I would have been like an out and out striker because I always played up front or okay. on the wings and played off of people and and stuff like that. So um, yeah, that that was my game and, and that was that was me really. Do you do you sometimes look at look looking at the modern game and 
you know, just just that get go into that young player that you were, and you do you, you sometimes think, oh, well, I wish I could play at this level now. Um, tell you, listen, I I play against the twenty three still at Watford. When I get the chance in training, I'll go and play and have a go. Um, obviously, I can't move as well as they can now, but I'm still, you know, quite quick for my age. I'm forty years old now. I'm still, you know, quick and, and nimble uh, for short for a short period of time. But I still enjoy playing. I play charity games. Um, whatever charity matches come up, I'm always there. I'm always available. Um, yeah, you know, it's, sometimes you look at players now and you, you know, you, you, you say if he, if he can play where he is, I, I could, I could have definitely played uh, at those levels. Like I said, I played at a good level anyway. Um, yeah. I, I, no, I mean yeah. you, 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 you. Look, any, I always say to people because what sometimes what youngsters don't understand. Is that I work with youngsters uh, predominantly. I have my own academy, so I work with youngsters from five all the way up to 16 years old and I don't even know if it's the youngsters at times I think youngsters will be happy if you chuck them in a pro environment if you could tell them that they're going to have a career as a professional footballer I reckon a lot of them would be quite satisfied and quite happy despite the level of it whereas I think it's the parents who are more like no if my son's not playing at the big four or the big six then he's not really playing the sport so how important was it for you to Play, get those loan moves um, going down the, down the pyramid a little bit and learning your trade down there. How important was that for you? You know what? I never really thought of it like that. I never had a plan. There was never a plan like this album. And they go, like, now the boys, when I talk to the 23s, or to, there's always a plan. I'm going to do this, this and this, and then get to this, this which is, is a good, good thing. For me, it was about scoring goals and proving I could score goals and create at whatever level whatever level I could, wherever I was put, wherever I always felt I was going to, you know, score goals or create goals. And every level I played in, I did that. Yeah. Um, so it was never really, obviously, I think all it done is it, it helped establish me. It just helps you prove that you can play at a level, mm. where it's, which is the toughest thing for youngsters is getting out there, playing, proving. Because once you're proving, then no one can have any questions about whether you can do it or not. And it's always a, a catch twenty two. Well, how is how is he gonna? How are you gonna gain experience if you're not given the time to play? Exactly. And if you're not given the time to play, how are you gonna gain it? You know, it's just like <laughs> it's it's a, it's, a, it's a tough one. Um, so yeah, it, obviously it was good for me, you know, to go to sport and to prove because it was always sort of a prove proving to other people as well. Um, sometimes, you know, I'll show you. Yeah. Um, and then you show them, and then. You got it's still not enough. You got to show them again, and you show them again until you step up to, to wherever you get to. So yeah, it was it was, it was a good it was it was good good learning. I think Did now what's now go on, finish finish up, what, finish up. What 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 what's funny now is you can't even get boys like when I was 17, 18, I was playing professional football. I was playing in, in senior men's teams, whether it be at uh, Den Haag when I was eighteen, whether it be at Barnet when I was nineteen, um, Cambridge United when I was nineteen. You know, I was playing. I was playing in the league already at those ages. And now, we're having to send boys to like Conference South or Ryman Prem. And so I don't know if the, if, 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 if the standards dropped or if, you know, managers don't trust the players. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, but things, things have changed in that respect, which is, which is interesting. Mm, yeah, because, so you would, be, when you were coming up, who were the like, who are the like superstars of of that that time? Like you know, so when you're 16, 17 years old, who who are the breakthrough guys? Just so I get bearing on what age category you were. Breakthrough guys in what respect? Like, like you know, you, even if it be like at Man United or somewhere like that, who were the youngsters yeah. that similar age to you that were coming? Right, out? So yeah, so so at my time in in when I played, so if I was playing in the FA Youth Cup or everyone I was playing against was yeah. like Michael Owen was my age. Wow. Um, he was breaking through at Liverpool. You had Tommy Smith um, breaking through at Watford. You had Alan Smith uh, at Leeds. You had yeah. Darius Vassell. You had uh, Woodgate. You had Paul Robinson. You had uh, Ashley Cole was in my was in my youth team. Um, I could reel them. I could reel them all off. Yeah, so 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 some quite, quite some big hitters there, basically some really really yeah, big my, hitters. Yeah, yeah, I think my age group probably was a strong, strong, strong age group, like in general uh, across the board. So, yeah, you know, there's a lot, a lot of competition. And then moving forward now, how does the coaching begin? Is that something you were doing while you were playing or is that something you took on afterwards? No, I, I had no interest in coaching. 
really as a player. I love, I love playing. There's still no, there's still no um, comparison to playing and coaching. You know, it's totally two totally different different cattle to fish. Um, playing is playing. Playing is you're involved. Playing is you, you know you you are your own. You, you you lead your own destiny basically if you like you know you 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 call the shots uh, as a coach obviously you put your team out you put your you do your work in the week you you do your analysis like you do you do your opposition analysis and your team and your selections and then they go out and they play mm. and that don't forget don't get me wrong you're passionate I am anyway I'm very I'm a very passionate person um, uh, but the, the coaching for me it came when I felt that things weren't going how I wanted it to. So when I had my problems abroad and I came back and I moved to, I moved to Shrewsbury and I thought, you know what, I've had to step down into, into League Two. I'll go again, build up and go. Uh, didn't quite happen. Um, and then, so I started my UA for B at Shrewsbury, I think in 2010. So, um, um, so that was, that was that. So I started that there. I didn't do any coaching. I just done my badge. And I started coaching actually when I stepped into the conference, when I thought, you know, my, my career was sort of going down, uh, downwards, on a downward spiral, sorry. Um, uh, I started, I went to Histon with Dave Livermore, who was my teammate at Arsenal. He's now assistant manager at Cardiff. Um, he was manager at Histon. And I was sort of player coach. So I was playing the striker uh, and a number 10, if you like, and I was coaching all the attacking players. So that was my first step into the realms of coaching and it just developed from there really oh that's brilliant like, it's it's weird isn't it because someone, someone like me I, so i lost the love for playing the game at about 16 years old i was like i think it was more a case of because i had big dreams and then those dreams didn't come to fruition and it was like you know what well i don't really want to play at any level no more i i want to do something else and my, my mind was always into that like, understanding and the art of the game and stuff like that so I think that's why I took up coaching. But for me, it was about the kids and trying to give those kids better, better understanding of the game early than what I had. I think that's what my mo- motivation for it was. So I, like you say, it's everyone's different. And obviously, because you were playing, like, like you're saying, when I was 15 years old, the only thing that mattered to me was trying to make it into the pro game. And when that didn't happen, obviously, you would know that when, when that doesn't happen, you think, what do you do now? Do you understand? So for me, it was coaching. But for you, like, like you're blessed in that sense where you you got a great career, and now you can come into the coaching world. Did you ever come down to the grassroots level to coach, or have you always been at a good level? No, I've done every level. I've 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 had an under eight team for well, was it under eight or under sevens? We started. Uh, I think it was under sevens. Maybe we started. Um, I started a grassroots team. I took them all the way up to like under 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 elevens. I think it was under eleven. So I've done grassroots. Yeah. Um, I've been part of um, I've been part of uh, non-league teams uh, as a as a manager as a coach. Um, I've coached academies from 15s up, uh, and I've been manager of a, of a first team. Yeah. So um, I've I've done you know I've done a lot, and I think I've got I've gained a lot of experience with it. And I think that you know that's one part of why I, I'm quite confident now. If if I was to be asked anything. But I could just say, oh, no, no one can say to me, oh, well, how do you know, you ain't done this, you ain't done that. Well, no, I've done, a, I've done a lot of it. I've been abroad, I've played abroad, I've been managed by foreign managers, I've played with foreign players at home and abroad, I've, I've, um, I've, I've been in different systems and styles of play at home and abroad, um, and I've, I've been through a, a whole range of coaching scenarios from 2010 to now. So I'd like to think I'm... You know, I'm doing yeah, I think, I think, I think, I think, Dave, you say it yourself, you've been in multiple, multiple different um, environments and learnt the game as you're going along. Because we always have this conversation with whoever comes on, and I'm always saying to them that you never stop learning. I don't think we, we ever stop learning as human beings. And if we do feel like we know everything, then I don't think that's the right attitude to have ever. Um, in terms of your coaching journey, like when you were at grassroots, how was that for you? Um, how was it in what respect? Like in terms of, because obviously you, you've been in the academy system, you, you've done all, all of that stuff. as well. So when you compare the two now, I, I always say, to, I mean, you might disagree with me on this, uh, but where I haven't been in the academy system 
and this is a bit naive, maybe, maybe a bit of a naive statement, but I always say at grassroots level, we get the empty canvas. So we, we're making the painting. And when we get them to a certain, certain level or they, they prove their, their worth, they then go on to the academy coaches who put the icing on the cake. Um, is, yeah. that, is that correct yeah. analogy do you think to use? Uh, no, I'd, I'd, I'd like to disagree. I, don't get me wrong. I think um, grassroots coaches do a lot of, do, put a lot of foundations in there. Some are good, some are bad. Yeah. Um, but there's, no, there's not much difference between grassroots coaches and, uh, and academy coaches other than qualifications, in my opinion. Mm. Um, I've, had, I've had grassroots coaches I know come into the system and, and, and thrive uh, and do very well. Um, because of one, the way they are, and two, the knowledge that they have. And I think we overlook that sometimes and we look at, at qualifications. You, listen, you've got to have your qualifications to get a job. It's like anything. You want to be a solicitor, you've got to have, you've got to have first, second class honours, whatever it is, or whatever field it is. Yeah. You've, got to have, you've got to have those qualifications, so you need to do it. Otherwise, you won't, you won't even be considered for a job. Mm. Um, but there's a lot of good coaches out there that don't have those qualifications that are better than four early coaches that do have those qualifications. In fact, I know that 100%. So, um, grassroots coaches do do, um, do a lot of groundwork um, for youngsters, and they still are. Um, that's, that's the bottom line. Yeah, that, that's wicked. It's, it's really refreshing for me to hear that, though, because I am one of those coaches that you're talking about, which is I have just haven't been given the opportunity to go and sit my UA for B. Um, I've been on the waiting list for about five years in between that they changed the course around and then the waiting list changed and priorities went somewhere else and I've never ever come to the to the top of the pecking order and I always have this conversation with Gifton believe you me because Gifton is um, pop on my case on it it was like get your badge get your badge get your badge and I'm like I'm trying <laughs> like you know it's not like I'm not trying but part of me did give up as well I'm not going to lie about it part of me mm. did say you know what I've I've had enough of trying now like, how much more trying can I do how much more do I have to prove to them that it's not like I'm asking them to give it to me for free or anything. I, I, I want to pay for it, but I just need to be given that opportunity to get on it. And where that opportunity yeah. still hasn't come even now, but now I look at it more from a sense that someone like Gifton did take that risk in me and give me an opportunity at a place like Billericay. And I think I would, I'm going to forever be grateful for that because even though it's National League South, for me, it's such a big step. I mean, could, can you understand that from gonna, my perspective? Yeah, I was going to ask. I was going to ask you who gave you the opportunity. I, I thought it would be Gifton. I know yeah. Gifton well, and um, you know he's a good guy. Uh, he's open to. Uh, it's quite similar to me in respect of being open to giving everyone an, the opportunity and chance to show what they can do. If you show you've got the right character and, and the right desire to do it, then why not give someone the opportunity and the chance to do it? It's, it's as simple as that. And if he's giving you that, well then. That's commendable, and like I see, you're saying you've been going for your A to B for five years. That's disappointing, but I understand. There's, I suppose, there's a lot of people trying to go for it, but there's, we can have a chat about that after the show, anyway. Ah, oh, brilliant! That's wicked, and this is what I like. This is what I like connecting with people like Gifted, like yourself, because not only do you bring such immense knowledge about the game, like we could talk. I can bet you we could talk here for three, four hours if I stop pressing the record button. And we could talk about football all day. And I will learn so much. I'll have a notepad and pen and I'll be learning so much. But at the same time, you, you're always willing to give the younger generation an opportunity to go and prove themselves. But when that younger generation, when you do give someone, let's just say for argument's sake, you gave someone like me an opportunity, what would you be looking at from me? What, what would you want to um, see? Uh, I'd like to make sure you, you're on time. You're not late for things. Uh, so punctuality is really important. Um, knowing your environment, obviously that takes time to learn that, you know, in respect of knowing when to talk, knowing when, when to listen, knowing, you know, just what mannerisms you show around the place. Um, creativity, um, and just gauging your ideas and seeing where you're at with your coaching uh, at the minute, uh, what, what, you, what you have, what, what you can bring to the table. Um, and just uh, like you say, that that real that that desire to want to learn and listen and, and just be around people that can, can teach, you know, or you think can teach you, you know, I think that's what's important: finding the right people around you. Yeah, and that's that's very well said. Like um, everyone needs mentors in their life, uh, and it doesn't matter what age you are. I'm sure you've got mentors currently yourself. Yeah, I've got. You know, um, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say like a mentor, but you know. 
obviously there's people that I, I, I look at and watch and say, you know, I like what they're doing. I, I mm. suppose you could use them, you could say they're a mentor to a certain extent. Uh, mentors that are out of my reach. Um, but, um, you know, there's people around me that I respect and, and I think very highly of their opinions. Um, you could call them mentors to a certain extent in my yeah. own little way. Um, or is it more of a, uh, is it more of a, yeah, it's a more respect, respecting. You know, you, you only res- no. you respect everybody for the position they hold, but you really respect people for what they are and what they represent as well. You know. Yeah, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. So how I need to go? I need to ask two things, two very important ones. Firstly, is how does the late and orient manager's job come about? Because that is massive. Like, surely when you got that opportunity, that that was a very proud moment for you. Uh, yeah, of cool, course cool it was. Um. I said, right, I said, I said it many times before. I said, when I went in there as under 15, 16s coach, I said, I'm going to try and be manager in five years. Wow. That's what I said in my own head. And I thought to myself, you know what? Don't say it to me. Keep it to yourself. If it happens, it happens. If it don't, keep working towards. Uh, and it happened in two years, I think. And it happened in two years in respect of all the problems and situations that happened around it. Obviously, I hadn't... I'd, put myself into a position that that gave me the opportunity to do it uh, I don't regret it you know I knew it was tough I knew uh, someone asked me the other day oh did you know you know you was going to have relegation on your CV it didn't even cross my mind it wasn't about relegation the, the club unfortunately was already in a bad position where if, if I had done enough to help them win every game every eight all eight games we possibly would have stayed up um, mm. so that would have been like a miracle and Jesus, you'd have had your, you would have been, uh, you'd have been, had a statue outside the stadium. <laughs> um, but um, I knew that was going to be tough, and I knew that the, the situation and the, the wage problem and uh, the staff around it was all a big, big problem. But for me, it was about being in a position again that I've, I've been in before. I've been in really tough, awkward, difficult situations, and I've never shirked them. Mm. And for me, I was going to not, nothing was going to would stop me from doing my job, doing it 100% fully, no matter what problems there were, what, what, what problems I was facing against people or uh, staff or players. And I was going to, I knew my job, I could lose my job. Like if I had said, no, nah, I'm not doing it, still do the eight, I'm not going to, I'll stay around as assistant manager or, or got, drop back down to the 18s or whatever. Yeah. I might have had a position at the end of the season, mm. but that's, that's not me. It's just, it's just not me. I'll sacrifice everything to do the right thing. And I, and I believe I've done that. Is that you got a no risk, no reward kind of mentality? Yeah, or yeah, you know, definitely. Um, I just think, I say it all the time, wherever you go, go with all your heart. I think it's, a, it's just it's a, a saying that Confucius um, uses or used. Um, and and, I, and I, I believe in that. Whatever you do, do it with all your heart. And whatever happens after that happens. Uh, I believe good things come to those who, who, who are honest, hardworking, and eventually you, you'll get, you know, you'll get your opportunity and your chance. Wow, that's brilliant, and and it must have been a it must have been a great experience just being back in back in the changing room because you've been in that changing room on the other side, so you've been a player, and you've had managers. How important was it having a career and, and being a player? Because a lot of people, myself included, at times. In, especially in my young and naive days where I would say, I could do that job. Yeah. And you probably hear it all the time from fans. Or I could do that job. I could go and change room and, and do it. But how important from being an ex-player, how important was it that you had that experience of being an ex-player before you became manager? I mean, I, I mean, before I got that job, I had managed Chesham. You know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That was probably harder. That's probably harder than managing Orient because you know, you're dealing with so many other aspects. You're dealing with players that don't want to turn up. You're dealing with players that can't turn up. You're dealing with players that want to come and earn 50 quid because they want some drink money. You've got players who are earning 50 quid and they're paying more than that to get into the, into the training ground because they want to be footballers who are young, still thriving, still trying to progress. Mm. And you've got, you've, got, you've got board members who think they know the game um, but really don't. And they want you to play a certain way but don't want to give you all the all the support around that yeah. or you've got, you, you've got board members who don't want you to play football they just want you to win games and it goes against what you believe Mate, that, that was even 
even harder. So mm. to go into, I knew I could do it. It wasn't a problem. It was the, the thing that was going to be, was there support around you to be able to do your job properly? But no, there yeah. wasn't. So that, that was the only, that was the only defining factor about it all. But we still managed to go and draw with Luton, go and beat Hartlepool uh, with a young team. So what we achieved and what the boys done was, was excellent. Uh, what it meant for me as a player, um, an, an ex-player stepping in the dressing room into a, a professional environment, it just meant, it didn't mean anything really. It, obviously, it, it meant a lot in respect of my progression and I'm getting to where I want to get to. Because I'll still say, you know, one, one day I want to be a, a Premier League manager. Will I get there? I don't know. I will strive to. If I don't, I'll be a, I'll be a manager somewhere. Whatever level, it will, it will happen because I will keep pushing and making sure it does. And if I get the opportunity and I do well, I'll keep going. If I don't, I might get the sack again, um, like I did at Cheshunt. Um, Did that stop me? No, it doesn't stop me because those things happening to you, like when I got released at eight, nine, pushes you on to be better and, and stronger. So um, it didn't mean much. All it meant was I was a professional guy and I wanted to do my job and I was ready to do it. That's wicked. You, you, you give us such a positive vibe when, when you speak because it's like, You've got, you've got this. You can just sense the, the the desire. You can sense the the. And I, I was, I was looking at your Twitter page, believe it or not. And your in in your profile, you say success is my drive. I love that. It's short, it's sweet, it's snappy, but it actually tells. It, it paints the whole picture about you. Yeah, I, I mean, well, that that's me, you know. Um, I, t- I told you at the start. I like to think that I'm honest, hardworking. I treat people with respect. I only treat people with respect that treat me with respect. It mm. could be a, it could be someone who cleans toilets, it could be someone who cleans the streets, it could be a director of a club. If they treat me with respect, not 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 over over or above what I deserve, mm. um, they'll get exactly the same back and more. If they if you don't, then you won't. It's as simple as that. That's that's how I work. That's brilliant. <laughs> Honestly, I'm getting such good advice from you, like. You know, sometimes when you talk to someone and you just feel inspired and you just feel like, you know what, if he's, he, he's putting that out there and he's, you, you're so confident in saying it and I love it. Is that you, you don't really meet that many honest people where they'll say, I want to be Premier League manager. Will I get there? I don't know. But I'm going to work my socks off to try. I, I proper respect that, you know. And I, I'm, I'm so glad that you're on here right now because I hope that we can continue the relationship and I can learn so much more of you because this is, this is excellent for me. Like, I'm like a fan right now. So I need to come back to my podcast head, really. And so you got your job, obviously, that you did what you did there. And then you come out of there. And obviously, you got this opportunity with the England under 16. So talk to us about that because that's massive. Like, that's the national team. Well, you, you missed out a big chunk before then. Yeah, I come, out of, I come out of Orient and I, I, I applied for, man, I can't even, it must be 200. 200 jobs. Wow. Whether it be in the league, whether it be academy, whether it be non-league, whether it be universities, whether it be I was looking abroad, at coaching jobs abroad. Um, everything you can think of, I, I applied for. And it was like, I remember doing a presentation and I put all the emails that I got up on the presentation. And it was like little, little um, sentences, sorry, not this time. Or um, uh, you're overqualified the position or um, this position has been filled already or uh, or this or that or whatever it, whatever, it, whatever it was I put it on the presentation like to show people exactly how hard it is yeah. um, so I, I think it was it must have been a year was it a year before I got another job I left in if I'm not mistaken 2016 uh, and I didn't get a job at, at Watford until 2000 and I maybe got the dates a bit mixed up, but it was a while. Yeah. And it was only a part time, part time, part time job. You know, somebody who had done sort of, I suppose, what I'd half achieved, to, to go in back into a part time position and only be offered a part time position somewhere, maybe wouldn't, I wouldn't, wouldn't have, someone else maybe wouldn't have done it. Yeah. Um, but for me, I went, I went into a 15, 16 part time position as a, as a part time staff. Earning this was this was like two years ago, earning you know thirty five pound an hour, um, and getting on with it. And from then it's progressed to lead position at, at fifteen sixteen lead at Watford. Then then um, now assistant uh, assistant. It was assistant twenty three. So now Hayden's gone up to the first team. Now it's at the, at the minute sort of leading. Um, 
so it's, it's progressing it's progressing well you know, I've got a good relationship with everybody around the club and the England thing came adjacent to it really um, there was an opportunity to go into uh, in, into England as a as a BAME um, and it was a, it was a, a put in the door yeah. and it was, it was you know it's been brilliant and this year that was last year this year I've actually gone as like in possession coach for the 16 so it's 15 he's now 16 um, and you know it's, it's progressing and the learning you know it's world leading um, and, and I'm picking up a lot from the the coaches there are all very very good coaches you know analysis um, analysis uh, staff are brilliant all the doctors and everyone just so on the ball with everything and the players obviously at a level that makes it slightly easier um, but still lots of work to do they're still young boys you know yeah. 15, 16 year old boys they're still learning the game um, you're just maybe cutting out a little bit of the, the brilliant basics stuff yeah. first um, so yeah, and that, that, that's me, and I'm just progressing and getting on with it, really. You know, that's my mad. Journey. So, so someone like you get who's who's just been the late and Orient manager, manager at League two, League Two, correct? Yeah. You come out of that job, albeit all this stuff that's going around you at the club as well. You're not exactly got the job in the best situation, and then you've applied over two hundred jobs and. Best position you got was a part-time job at Watford. This was also a year later. I, I'm, this is the thing because I've never spoken to you before, and I'm doing this is at the same time. It's it's flabbergasting to me that how first of all to, you had to apply for 200 jobs, and and second of all, when you do get a job, you get a part-time position. But th- I'm trying to understand the mindset that so many coaches who had not got the experience that you've had, who have not been in the positions that you've had would turn that job down, would turn their nose up at, 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 at a part-time job. Um, what was the driving force behind you taking it? Was it just the case that you'd been out of the game for so long or did you know that that was, that was your next stepping stone? I think when we talk about... I said I don't, when I was younger, I never really had a plan. Yeah. You know, as a player, I just got on with it and it, it went where it went. You know, I just worked hard, I was hard working and that, that took me to where I needed to get to in my career. Now, there's always a sort of an idea in my head. And I always say, you know, I don't like to use the term because it's a bit big time. Um, But uh, the cream always rises to the top. So no matter what you do, no matter what you do, that will always be the case. And um, I'm not saying I'm the cream yet. I'm I'm, I'm working towards being the best I can be. I'm just not gonna let things keep me down. You know, um, and you just got if you if you enjoy something and you love something, you you, um, you keep doing it. It doesn't matter whether you're earning fifty thousand, sixty thousand, hundred thousand, twenty thousand, or thirty pounds. Yeah. Um, I still I still believe that um, eventually you'll get you'll get what you deserve. Um, people will recognise it, and you can then reflect and say, I remember I've got a story to tell, and I can say all these things. I've, I've been there and I've done this, this, this and this. Not, not many people can say that, you know. And I, so I'm, I'm, I'm proud of that. I'm proud of that and, and, and I'll always be that way. Right, so you should be, to be honest with you. So you should be. Like, it's the first time speaking to you. You've, you've already given me like such a positive vibe. I'm sure you're giving the viewers such a positive vibe. People who don't, who've not heard your story, people who... Pop, some, some people may not even know you exist, but by the name, like, oh yeah, there was a guy, Omar Riza, played at West Ham or played at Arsenal. But don't actually, I've never actually dived into you. And I think this is why I, I want to bring guests like you on this because it, you tell a story, but it's so refreshing. It's so honest and it's actually inspirational. Like, I don't know if you see it as you're being inspirational. You're just being yourself. But to, to someone like me, it's massively inspirational because I'm looking at it from a sense where if the ex-gaffer, Leon Orient, has to work hard, who the hell am I? Do you understand? And I hope a lot of people... Well, I, that are, I was... Yeah, sorry, go on. Yeah, I was just saying, I hope a lot of people that are watching this, that are similar to myself, who are, who are even the youngsters watching this at the club, who, who are nobody right now, hope they look at this and be like, well, if a gaffer at a League Two club has to come out of the job, apply for jobs, not only does he have to apply for them, take rejection on those jobs as well, and then take an opportunity at a, a part-time role, we're nobody. Do you understand? We're no, we have to work 10, 15, 20 times harder all the time, every single day. We can't take no rest in this game. 
I mean, in, in, a, in a certain respect, you could look at the situation and say, you know, should I, should I have been a manager at Leighton Orient? Um, you know, with the history of the club and sort of, you know, the level, maybe people could turn around and say, you know what, he's not ready to be a manager. But that was what was presented to me. Mm. And I took it and I rolled it and I've done it. So there's, there's different ways people could look at it. Maybe that was why. And you know, maybe people looked at me, he shouldn't have been the manager anyway. It would never have happened if, if this didn't happen, that didn't happen, that didn't happen. But, you know, so you, you can't really tell. But what I will say is, um, or you can't really tell what people's thinkings are behind, behind the situation. But what, what I will say is that when people ask me, you know, and I tell them these things, that should let them, that should give them an understanding of how difficult it is to get somewhere. So there's, there's, there's people that haven't had careers, like yourself, in, in the game to a certain extent. I've yeah. played at a younger age, but um, are trying to work their way into the game. And it's, it's really tough. It's not easy. It's even tougher for you guys than it is for, you know, I mean, I'll probably say I'm an ex-player who's had a tough time. Uh, getting into where I want to yeah. get to, and I'm finally slowly getting there. Um, and I played the game, you know. So for people that haven't played the game that want to get there, and they're not in that circle, if you like, or uh, you know, uh, it, it's it's really difficult. But hopefully, with sort of coaching around, you know, listen, we can't all, you can't help everyone. It's no. just not possible um, because there's so many people that want to do it. The uh, same with players. There's so many players out there that want to be pros. They can't all be pros. Um, and have good careers it's one of those things um, and you have to be good at what you do you can want to do it but you have to be good at it as well you know I'm still developing I'm still getting better. listen I'm not saying um, I'll, I'll always learn you know I'm, I'm a lifelong learner that, that's me um, yeah. I suppose you know if, if, if people are built that way then they'll continue to progress um, but it's tough it's, it's not easy and you can't if you're going to just fall at the first hurdle then it's going to be a, be a long, hard process. Yeah, I think mean, that's, brilliant. that's brilliant advice for people as well because it kind of brings the, brings the reality back to, to things because it's all well and good dreaming. I always say dream big, you know, reach for the stars and, and, and the rest of it. But at the same time, you have to have some realness about it. And speaking to someone like you, bring some perspective into what, even what I do, first and foremost, this is for me. Do you understand? This advice that you've given is for me. Like, like I said, I haven't had a career in game. I'm, I realise that now. You know, when I walk into a dressing room at Billerick and I'm looking at the players and, you know, you've got someone like Ronnie Henry there, the skipper who's been at League 2, 7, 6, 700 appearances, or whatever it is, and all the way around the dressing room, you've got seasoned pros and you've got the likes of Gift and Jamie in, in, in the dugout with you. You soon start to realise that you haven't had a career and you should... Like, that's why I find it a privilege being there. And it's not the case where I say that the dream stops here. Like, this is it. This is my hurdle. This is my limit. But you continue to work hard. I continue to connect with people like yourself. And you just being on here, honestly, you, you, like I said to you, you're not going to realize how important it is. But just if one person from, from this listening to this takes something from it, it's going to be me. I'm telling you that now. Is that you've given the me... Thing is, where, yeah, go on. The thing is where we make a mistake. The thing where we make a mistake is that because you've had a career in the game, it doesn't mean you're a better coach than somebody who been coaching since he was 17, 18. You know, someone who's been coaching since they're, if you're if you've been coaching since you're 17, 18 and you're now 31, uh, you've been coaching for probably as long as I have. So obviously it depends on, you know, the, I think the only difference would be with with a player, a coach that's played the game at a real high level is probably that when when you see something in, in training and you you felt it in a game at top top elite level. I suppose you can really give them your take on what they're doing. Yeah. Whereas when you're a coach who, okay, you may have played the game and you, uh, you've been a coach a while, um, it's sometimes hard to put yourself in that yeah. player's shoes. Yeah. You know? um, that's probably the only difference that I could say between player, coaches that haven't played and, or played at a top level and coaches that have played. That's the only real difference. But there's no, you know... You may have not played the game and you could be a great... I think Mourinho never played the game. Yeah, that's right. You know? And he, he's, he's the world's best... One of the world's best coaches. So, I don't look at that either. Um, and that's why I've given... You know, I've, I like to think I've given people the opportunity who haven't played the game, but I respect mm. a lot because of the way they are and the way they hold themselves and the knowledge that they've got. 
Nah, that's superb. That's superb. Now, I have to ask you this. I, I already know the answer. And I was, I've only focused you for about 40, 45 minutes, but I don't know the answer what this is going to be. But I have to ask it is what are the goals for the future? I know you said in playing career, you didn't really plan. Now you are trying to put a little development plan together. What, what is, where do you see yourself in five years' time? Um, I just think my career, my, my coaching is taking me where it's going to take me. Obviously, I'll, I will, there will be different pathways and avenues that I'll have to look at and um, along the way, you know, and, and, and how it progresses. Um, I'm just, I'm just doing what I, I just do what I, I just work hard, you know. I don't really think of anything else. I want to be maybe one day, you know, financially rewarded for the hard work that I do. Um, because I still think, you know, when you're, when you're, when you're trying to work your way up in the game, you, you take, you take a hit sometimes. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um. So that's one thing. Second thing is have people around that, that are. are uh, are knowledgeable and that are that show an interest in what you're doing and a respect for what you do and respect you for who you are um, even if they have been around a lot longer than you and have uh, got a lot more in, uh, got a lot more um, experience than you um, they're the sort of things I'm looking to do now just put myself in and around people that I can learn from people that I can give something back to and and me just to keep developing and, 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 and getting better and better no, nah, that's brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. Listen, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Your, your journey is really and truly is actually inspirational. I don't think it's your journey that's inspirational in a sense, not, not taking anything away from it. I think it's just you. Yes, you the, the characteristic, the, the, the aura that you bring is it, it, literally, it, it, it is it's magnetic. It's like, I, you know, I want to just, uh, as soon as I've done this, I'm going to be like, right, what do I need to do? What do I, how do I learn? I'm going to be doing your head in. You're going to block me. I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> just gotta be you, mate. Just, just, just be you, mate. Be natural. Be you. Learn from people like you say you're doing. Um, try things. You know, if you're taking the sixteens now, be Um You say you're taking the sixteens. No, you? I'm with the first team. I'm with the first team. I know you're with the first team, but you. you no, I've got my own. Team. I've got my own academy. I've got my own academy. Um, oh, you got an academy? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's time for you to really practice and hone things. Um, don't work. Who cares? Who's gonna mm. say anything? You know, um, and just keep developing. No, nah, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. And seeing as you have been a manager, and seeing as I ask every single person who comes on this the same question, you only get two of them. Uh, you only get to pick one out of the two. Ronaldo or Messi? Messi. Wow, why, why is it for you? No, I can't even argue with you. I'm not even going to try to argue with you because you just got to put me in my place, so I'd rather not. <laughs> no, well, I'm not. Everyone, everyone's got their own opinion, isn't there? But who, who does what? Yeah, they're both different players. If you're going to give someone, uh, I, I, you know, for me, I wouldn't pick out the two. I'd mm. say they're both equally as good as each other, but at doing different things. That's what I would say. Yeah. Um, you know, the, but if I had to pick one, I'd say Messi because I just think he's more of a team player. Mm. You know? And that for me, that's 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 what I'm about. I think that's what you were, isn't it? W weren't you like? Like That's I didn't really, I, was, yeah. I didn't really touch on your like coaching philosophy and coaching ethos and stuff like that. And I would love to bring you back on someday to talk more specific about the tactics of the game and stuff like that, and dive a little bit deeper into the actual art of football. Um, I think today was just about getting to know you and for people to get to know you, and then maybe we can have you back on, you know, in in a, in a car because where it looks like we're going to be in this quarantine phase for a while. So you know, it'll be really, really good to have you on and get into the mind of Omar a little bit. No problem. No problem. Uh, brilliant. Listen, Omar, it's been an absolute pleasure. You, you're, you've been an absolute pleasure. Um, guys, I've put, put his socials, his Twitters on there. Make sure you give him a follow. Follow his career. He's, trust me, he's going. He said it. He's going that way. So we have to keep following him and we have to keep supporting him. I know I definitely will be. Um, you guys know what to do. Like, share, subscribe. Share this out because it's inspirational. 